This video is going to be a quick introduction on using the Calico Editor in Shell along with Python so that you can control a Scribbler robot. Okay. Well, The first thing you want to do is go to this website and make sure you download the correct software. So depending on whether you have Windows or a Mac, you pick one of these. Now this is significantly easier than the old Miro um, downloads. They required that you had them in very specific places. These are really easy. You can download them and put them anywhere. Okay. So once you download it and install it, you're going to have a little icon that looks like this. At first it doesn't really look like a program, but it is an actual program. Um, I've made a shortcut to it on my desktop here. Okay. So you double click on it. Now you might get a pop-up window that asks you if you want to run it. Just say yes. You can also check a little box that says, you know, don't ask me this every time. Okay. So when you start this, um, you're going to have three windows. Okay. This one says home. You don't really need this because most of these things are up here. So click on shell instead. Okay. So the first thing I want to point out is that we are going to be using Python. Notice it says Python here. Um, it's really important to realize what these different things are. Python is the language that we're going to be writing with. Okay, so like when you write a letter, you write it in English. If I'm going to write a program, I'm going to write it in Python. Okay, so um, this um, shell here is where you can essentially um, enter a command and it automatically runs it. Okay. However, most of the programming we're going to be done uh, doing is going to be over here. But this is really nice because you can just do really quick, like here's a line, do this right now. Okay. Whereas over here you can do a bunch of lines and then have them all run at the same time. Okay. So this is really great for controlling your robot on the fly. So right now, as everything is, you can't just start controlling your robot because the commands for the robot are not in Python's vocabulary. Okay? Python doesn't know the words to make the robot move. Um, so what we're going to first have to do is tell the Python shell right in here um, that we're going to use the words in the Miro modules library. Okay? So we're going, and I'll show you how to do it in the um, in this window later. Okay, So right now let's do it in the shell. So the first thing you need to do is say from Miro import star. Okay, So what this is saying is from the Miro module you want to import and this star means everything. Okay, so from the Miro module, import everything. You can put words here to specify like different pieces of it that you want to import, but we want everything, so we're going to use the star. So then you just press enter and watch what happens down here. Oh, my stuff messes up. Oh, because I use the lowercase m, so this is actually really good because it shows you um, what you may see if you do what I just did. In older versions, Miro was lowercase. Well, now it is capitalized. So if you accidentally lowercase it like I just did, it's going to give you this. Okay. So from Miro import everything, enter, and notice it says okay. So that means we did it right. Okay. The nice thing about doing um, your coding in the shell is you get immediate feedback as to, um, about whether what you've done is right or wrong. Okay. So now we've told Python, hey, I want to use all these extra words so I can move my robot around. Okay. Words like forward and backward because those weren't originally in the Python language. Okay. But now we need to tell the um, we need to tell the shell that we have a robot. Okay. Um, I want to also point out that a module, which is what the, this Miro thing is, a Miro is a module, and it's essentially a file that holds a chunk of code. Okay. This particular chunk of code holds words that we need to be able to to control the robot. 
Okay, so you can use different modules to do this, but this is the one you're going to need every time to actually run the robot. So now you've installed the, well, you've imported the appropriate words. So now what we're going to do is talk about um, getting the actual robot to uh, communicate with this shell. Okay, so we need to tell the computer to connect to either a robot or a simulator. Okay, for this example, I'm just going to do it with the simulator because everybody has a simulator. Not everybody will have the actual Scribbler robot. So, what you're going to do is type INIT parenthesis Scribbler. Oh, I'm sorry, simulator. Okay. You have to make sure that it's in quotes and the parentheses are closed. Okay, this INIT essentially means initiate. Okay, so initiate this simulator. Okay. So you press enter. And this is gonna show up. So there's a little fake robot here. It also says you're using simulated fluke, simulated scribbler two, and his name is Scribby. Okay. So now we have a robot that we can command, but right now it's just sitting there. But we can start telling it to do things. So um, one other thing I want to point out is you can't make this go behind this window. So um, like the only thing you can do is minimize it, but it's best to have it up because as you're putting things in the shell, you can actually watch it. So I suggest just putting it over here. Okay, so let's try making this thing move a little bit. So we're not going to go through all of the functionality, just some really quick ones. Um, so for example, I can do forward. Okay, um, and then when you put the forward function, you do parentheses, just like we did here. Notice we had parenthesis, close parenthesis. So we have forward, and then forward takes two values. The first value is the speed of the robot. Okay, and the general speed you could just use is one. You can change that if you use a smaller number like 0.2, he'll go slower. If you use a bigger number like 2, he'll go um, faster. So, and then the second number is how long you want him to go that speed for. So, for example, if you put 2, that means he's going to go a speed of 1 for 2 seconds. Okay, so watch him as I press enter. Okay, now you might also have noticed that the function came up and it took a while before it said okay. It'll say okay after it's done, okay, because technically when you're in the shell you're not really supposed to put another function in until the other one's already done running. Okay, so we can also do backward, one, two, and he'll go the same speed for the same amount of time just in the other direction and he's going to end up where he initially was. Okay, now you can also do turn left, one, two, Okay, notice that turn left is camel cased. Camel cased means it starts with a lowercase letter and then every new word is uppercase. Okay, so turn left, and he's going to turn left. And we could do turn right, and he turns right. Okay, so those are the only functions I'm going to go over um, with this. Um, tutorial, but I will do more later. So I want to continue to talk about the functionality of this uh, shell of, or of this program. Okay, um, Really this shell is not really where you're going to be writing your code. You're mostly going to be writing your code over here. Okay, you notice when you wrote a code, a line of code, you pressed enter and then something happened and you had to wait. We well, don't want to have to do that. Um, another thing is, is I couldn't go back and like change my mistakes. Okay. Once I said turn right, he turned right. I couldn't change it to turn left. Okay. So what I want to do is write an actual program that runs this, and I'm going to do that over here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and close this because I will reopen it. I am also going to get rid of all of this. The way you do that is you do clear output because notice this is the output window. Also just go ahead and reset shell. That'll erase anything that you've done. Okay. So this is going to be where we write our initial program. Now one thing about Python is anything that follows a 
pound sign is going to be ignored by the code. So it's going to read each one of your lines from top to bottom, and if it sees this, it's going to ignore everything that follows it. So usually what you do is you use this to, or hashtag if you want to call it a hashtag instead of a pound sign, it'll use this hashtag to um, give notes to whoever's reading your code. So if you're going to give this code to your teacher, you would put your name on it. Okay, so, and you'd spell it correctly. Okay. And then maybe the next thing you'd put is the date, which is 8, 14, 13. And then usually people will also include the name of the, the file. So I'm just going to call it Python intro. Now Python has a um, .py at the end of all Python files. Okay, and you might also want to put like a description of what the file is, you know, Python introduction video or whatever you're doing. Okay, so remember when I was in the shell over here, the first thing I had to do was say, well, I need all those words in the Miro library. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing here, and I use the same syntax. So I say from Miro import everything. Now notice when I press enter this time, nothing happens in my output. That's because I have to first run this program for anything to start happening. Okay, this is really nice because it allows me to edit things, it allows me to make mistakes and go back and fix them without all this stuff happening. Okay, now I need to tell it to grab that simulator robot. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, do the forward, backward, turn left, turn right, just like I did before. Okay, but the one thing that's different about using um, a Python script versus writing something in the shell is you have to define functions, and we'll go more in depth with that later, but for now let's just say I'm going to make this function named move him, and I'm going to write all of my code within that. Okay, so all the things that I want him to do are going to be within this function. So the way you start a function is you do def for define, and then you just name your function. You can name it whatever you want. I always like to name mine based on what I'm actually trying to do. I want to move them, so I'm going to call it move them. Then you put parentheses. Remember when we were putting functions in the shell, how they had parentheses, so all functions need those. Then you do colon. That says anything that follows this is going to be within my function. Okay. Now general convention is that you always tab to start writing the stuff within your function. That way it just looks nice and clean and everything lines up. You can tell, well, anything that's under here and indented is an, um, belongs to this function. Okay, so remember we did forward, one, two, oops, okay, backward, one, two, turn left, one, two, and you can change those numbers up if you want. Turn right, one, two. Okay, one nice thing about Python is you don't have to put um, any kind of punctuation at the end of these. In other languages you have to put like semicolons or something behind it, but you don't have to do that in Python. You just stop when you're done. Okay, now what you want to do is close this function. Say just this stuff needs to be in it. Okay, you don't want anything below this, just this stuff. So the way you close it is you use the function name, move him, and then put parentheses. This time you don't put the colon because the colon is only when you start it. Okay, so def, the function name, colon starts it, function name, um, parentheses, ends it. Okay, now remember also I said up here that anything followed by a hashtag is um, going to be ignored. You could put hashtags in the middle here, you know, like define the function and the function, or even like right above if you want. Um, the only thing that you need to make sure of is that you don't have any code that you want the computer to read after this. Okay, anything that follows that is not going to be read. And the nice thing about um, the calico shell um, is that it changes them to green. So anything that's green is not going to affect your code. OK? 
Okay, so now we're ready. We can go ahead and run our function. And the way you do that is hit this thing right here. Okay, notice when you hover over it, it says run a script. Notice this thing says script. Okay, so run a script. Okay, so click that, and it's going to ask you to save it. I'm just going to save mine to my desktop, and I'm going to call it intro video. Okay, notice the PY. Of the, oh, I actually called it Python intro up here, so let me go ahead and do that. Python intro. Okay, notice the PY at the end. So then you do save. Backward. What did you want to do? On indent. Okay. So let's check this again. Huh. No module name. Oh, I did it again. I'm going to do that a lot because the um, I'm used to doing lowercase. Run again. Okay. Do do. There it is. Okay. So notice this thing is really picky. If you make a simple mistake, like not capitali capitalizing Miro, okay, having some indentions in here. It's going to really mess your stuff up, so you really want to be careful. But you also want to look at what it says here. Okay, it says unindent does not match any outer indentation level. So that was telling me, hey, you have some problem where something is indented when it shouldn't be. And it also gives you a hint about where it is, line 12. Now, my actual problem was in my line 11. Okay, but because this one was, you know, forward more and then this one was backwards, but what it was saying is, hey, this one doesn't line up with the one above it. Okay? And then it said, hey, there's no module a module named Miro. Well, that's because the module is named Miro with a capital N. Okay? So, uh yeah, I made some mistakes, but they were good um learning experiences for you, I guess, because you can see what to expect. They're very simple mistakes. They're very easy mistakes. Um, one thing to keep in mind is when you're coding, you're going to make mistakes. Just read what it says here and try to figure out what, it, um, what the mistake is. Usually, it's not going to be um, that big of a problem. Okay, and that is it.